Well, welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications using ArcGIS. This week, we'll teach you about spectral regions. So here's an example. This is the Tanana River downstream from Fairbanks, and this is the blue spectral And then this is the green spectral And the red spectral region. And then the near infrared spectral region and the short wave infrared spectral region. So each of these spectral regions has unique characteristics and advantages and disadvantages that you'll learn about in this week's video session. You'll also learn about color infrared photography and how to display. Uh, most satellite images as color infrared images. Next, we'll explore the spectral relationships of polygons of aspen infected with leaf miner compared to birch polygons that have a healthy canopy. And we'll explore the relationship within these polygons using very narrow range of wavelengths called hyperspectral remote sensing. So here is a hyperspectral image and it actually consists of 198 different spectral bands. So what we can do is extract 198 spectral values within the birch polygons and compare those with 198 spectral values within the aspen polygon. So here, for example, the first band is in the blue spectral region and it peaks at this wavelength. And here's the average value of aspen compared to the average value of birch. All the way to band 198, and that's in the short wave infrared spectral region. And this is its wavelength and then the value for aspen versus the value for birch. And then you'll explore the spectral relationship across a topo sequence going from a fairly moist alluvial site upslope to a bid-slope site to ridge top site and explore the broadband spectral reflectance of the shortwave infrared as we go along this topo sequence. And finally, you'll know, compare the spectral relationship between two vegetation types. So these circles in the uplands represent aspen birch stands, which are broadly forest. And these squares in this wetland area represent a buck bean or many anthes vegetation type, which is a broadleaf wetland type. And what you'll do is compare the mean spectral values within these wetland broadleaf communities compared to these upland broadleaf forest communities. And you'll do that comparison across uh, five different spectral bands. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do this week. So if you go to the next video session, we'll get started.